If you're looking for a really simple meatloaf recipe that doesn't include any eggs or any filler ingredients or any grains of any kind, this is the meatloaf recipe for you. Hey friends, Victoria from amodernhomestead.com here and I am sharing with you my grandmother's meatloaf recipe. You may think that a meatloaf without any eggs or grains or rice of any kind wouldn't really be great. This, this recipe doesn't have any of that in it. It doesn't have any breadcrumbs. It doesn't have any beans or carrots or anything like that in it. This is just a meat loaf and it is my favorite. And every time I serve this to anybody, they tell me how amazing the meatloaf is and they always ask for the recipe. They ask for seconds every time. They love it when I make this recipe. And one of my secrets is the type of meat. So we stopped using ground beef, just regular ground beef a long time ago. And we started using ground brisket. And so there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, just the flavor is so much better with brisket. When you go to the store and you pick out a brisket and you have it ground, you know what's in it. Um, there's a lot of controversy about ground beef and what's included in it. And so to just avoid that, we started um, getting ground brisket. And you can go to the grocery store, pick up a brisket, and take it over to the butcher and have them grind it for you. Nine times out of 10, they'll do it no problem at all. Sometimes they might heckle you a little bit, but they still end up doing it. If for some reason your butcher won't do it and you have a KitchenAid, you can always get the uh, meat grinding attachment for the KitchenAid and just grind it at home yourself. It's really not hard. We've done that many times. So we're going to go ahead and dive in to this brisket and turn it into a couple of meatloafs. I have this vintage um, Corning Ware uh, bread pan, loaf pan, that I got while antiquing with my mom last week. And then I also have just a 9 by 13 uh, Pyrex pan, and I have 8 pounds of ground brisket. So let's get started. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and put the, all of this brisket into a big pan. All of my big bowls are still packed up from the move. And so I'm just going to use this big soup pot that I have. To mix and so we're going to put all of the meat in here I'm gonna wash my hands and put the spices in. All right, so for this much brisket, I normally put in a tablespoon of salt, a tablespoon of pepper, and two tablespoons of garlic, but you can adjust that to your own likings. You can put any other spices in there that you like to have um, instead or in addition. It's really simple, just make it according to your taste and um, write down the combination that you liked. So we've got a tablespoon of salt. tablespoon of pepper. I need to get one of the flip lids for my pepper. And then two tablespoons of garlic. I accidentally ordered powdered garlic the last time instead of granulated, so we're suffering through that. But granulated or powdered will work just fine. So two tablespoons of that and then you're just gonna mix it with your hands. Kind of flip it over, get to the bottom, that helps. Mix it in faster. You don't wanna just mix the top half. Let's see, I don't know if you can see this. There's like a big glog of pepper there. Um, right here. So you want to make sure that you're watching for that and getting everything really mixed in. That looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill my corningware dish first. Make sure I have enough in there. This is probably going to take about two pounds. With brisket, you are gonna have a lot of fat. Um, it's gonna drain off, which is of course one of the reasons why you put filler in it to absorb all that grease, but we don't like to do it that way. So you can, you can definitely add breadcrumbs or rice or anything that you would like. 
All right, so that is full enough. I don't want it to be too um, full to the top because like I said, that grease is going to um, you know, come out of the meat. And so you don't want it to be too full, otherwise it'll overflow. And we are gonna put our ketchup on top. So now we're gonna put the rest into this number 13. Usually this takes about five pounds. This one in the, in the corning ware is going to be for dinner, and this is going to go into the freezer after I bake it. So once I bake the meatloaf, what I do is I let it cool a little bit and then cut it into portioned pieces. And then I place those pieces on a tray lined with wax paper, and I put the tray in the freezer to freeze. And then once the pieces are frozen, you can just put them in a gallon Ziploc bag and then reheat them whenever you would like. And you have portioned out meatloaf that you can have as a last minute meal anytime. It really only takes about 30 minutes to heat up in the oven. It's a really, really easy meal. So I, I often like to make this in bulk, but um, the brisket was on sale the other day when I went to the grocery store. And as a result, there was only one available. So normally we process about 20 pounds of brisket at a time, but there was only one brisket and it was only eight pounds, a pretty small brisket. Uh, so this is what we got this time. So I'm gonna wash my hands again and we're gonna do the ketchup. Next, we're gonna add the ketchup to the top. Now, my dad has an amazing ketchup glaze that he makes with all sorts of ingredients. It has brown sugar and it has mustard and it has Worcestershire sauce and all sorts of things in it and it is amazing. But I like to keep it old school. We're just gonna use ketchup. We use the Heinz organic ketchup and it's amazing. If you are doing paleo, you can either get paleo ketchup or make your own. I do have a recipe on the website at modernhomestead.com for very easy um, paleo ketchup that we usually use uh, when we're doing no sugar. So, but for this, I'm just gonna use ketchup. I use an entire bottle, this is 32 ounces of ketchup for the five pound. And then I'm gonna use just what I have in my fridge, which is about this much for the two pound. And um, then we're gonna bake it like that. And then I'm just gonna shake the pan around to get this evened out. Perfect, let's do this one. These are both ready to go in the oven at 375 for about 45 minutes. You'll want to check it and make sure that it's done all the way through or done to your likeness at least. And just make sure that the ketchup doesn't burn on top. You can burn it. Um, but if you cook it just right, then it creates a lovely caramelized ketchup on the top that's very delicious. So here we are. This is after 45 minutes. And so you can see all of that grease that has released from the brisket. Um, it's not quite done enough for me. I like the edges to be a little bit darker than that. Um, this one is coming along well. So if you're going to freeze it and reheat it, this right here is going to be fine. But I do like the ketchup to be a little bit more caramelized and the edges to be a little browner. Um, 
So you could take it out right now, go ahead and freeze it, and then when you reheat it, you know, it should caramelize up a little bit. But if you're going to eat it right away, I would definitely let it caramelize a little bit more. I'm going to actually put this back in for like another 15 minutes and check it. So this is the regular meatloaf. I always make it in this pan typically um, and uh, cut it up into pieces and we freeze it that way. And it looks totally normal. Um, you know, all of the, the blood and the grease came out around the edges. So the meatloaf that's in here will be really clean. I can cut it up and put it in the freezer, no problem. Now the meatloaf over here in this um, loaf pan, you can see there's actually quite a lot of blood mixed in with the ketchup. So I kind of scraped it off, but it means that there's not a lot of ketchup on top now. And it bubbled up really oddly and stuff. I probably won't make it like this again, unless um, maybe like halfway through I pierced it to let some of that blood come out. Um, and I probably wouldn't put the ketchup on first. So I'd probably cook it in this, pierce it, um, and let the blood come out, and then scrape it off and put the ketchup on and cook it longer. So just doing you know, a little bit of a learning experience for me there, but it's still gonna be delicious. And um, I'm gonna plate it up for dinner here in just a second. Tonight I'm going to serve this alongside some sweet potatoes and green peas, so I'll see you at dinner time. So this is dinner. We've got a sweet potato, we've got sautéed green peas, and a big slab of meatloaf. I hope that you enjoyed this recipe. I hope you get to make it soon. And please like and subscribe our channel, and come back often for more videos just like this. See you next time!